Hello, I'm Father Joe Roche of the Marian Fathers of the Immaculate Conception. Thank you for joining us as we continue with our year-long journey reading the diary of St. Maria Faustina Kowalska from beginning to end. Today we take up from where we left off, beginning with diary entry number 506. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, Krakow, October 27th, 1935. Father Andras, Spiritual Council. Do nothing without the consent of the superiors. One must think this matter over thoroughly and pray much. One must be very careful about these things, because in your present situation, sister, the will of God is certain and clear, for you are in fact bound to this congregation by vows, and perpetual vows at that, so there should be no doubt What you are experiencing interiorly, sister, are only the glimmerings of a project. God can make some alterations, but such things are very rare. Don't be in a hurry, sister, until you have received more precise knowledge. The works of God proceed slowly, but if they are of Him, you will surely recognize them clearly. If they are not, they will disappear." and you, by being obedient, will not go astray. Speak frankly about everything to your confessor, and obey him blindly. For the present, sister, there is nothing more for you to do than accept the suffering until the time when everything will become clear. That is, all things will be resolved. You are well disposed as regards these matters, and so continue in this simplicity and spirit of obedience. This is a good sign. If you continue in this attitude, God will not allow you to fall into error. Still, as much as is possible, keep far away from these things. But if, despite that, they still come your way, receive them calmly and do not fear anything. You are in the good hands of a very good God. In all that you have told me, I do not see any illusion or anything contrary to faith. These are things which are good in themselves, and it would indeed be good if there were a group of souls pleading with God for the world, as we are all in need of prayer. You have a good director. Stay with him and be at peace. Be faithful to God's will and carry it out. As to your duties... Always do what you are told to do, and as you are told to do it, no matter how humiliating or toilsome it might be. Always choose the last place, and then they themselves will say to you, Go up higher. In spirit and in your demeanor, consider yourself the least in the whole house and in the entire congregation. In everything and at all times, be most faithful to God. I desire, O my Jesus, to suffer and burn with the flame of your love in all the circumstances of my life. I am yours, completely yours, and I wish to disappear in you, O Jesus. I wish to be lost in your divine beauty. You pursue me with your love, O Lord. You penetrate my soul like a ray of the sun and change its darkness into your light. I feel very vividly that I am living in you as one small spark swallowed up by the incomprehensible fire with which you burn, O inconceivable Trinity. No greater joy is to be found than that of loving God. Already here on earth we can taste the happiness of those in heaven by an intimate union with God a union that is extraordinary and often quite incomprehensible to us. One can attain this very grace through simple faithfulness of soul. When a reluctance and a monotony as regards my duties begins to take possession of me, I remind myself that I am in the house of the Lord, where nothing is small and where the glory of the church and the progress of many a soul 
depend on this small deed of mine, accomplished in a divinized way. Therefore there is nothing small in a religious congregation. In the adversities that I experience, I remind myself that the time for doing battle has not yet come to an end. I arm myself with patience, and in this way I defeat my assailant. In no way do I seek perfection inquisitively, but I probe into the spirit of Jesus and fix my eyes on his deeds as summarized in the gospel. Even if I lived a thousand years, I would not exhaust what is contained there. Well, judging by the spiritual counsels of Father Andras, St. Faustina must have made another confession during the retreat and opened her plans to him, because his counsels are very specific and very helpful. He tells her to not be in a hurry. Let God's plans unfold. In time, it will become clear what God is asking of her. This retreat took place in October of 1935, and St. Faustina died less than three years later. And during part of that time, she was extremely sick. So it became evident that God's plan was not for her to leave her community and to found a new one. He counsels her to remain humble and to faithfully carry out all of her duties. St. Faustina makes an offering of herself to Jesus in prayer. She also writes that her tasks at the convent become boring and monotonous at times. I think this is inevitable in everyone's life. But she reminds herself that she is living in the Lord's house. So even small deeds have value when offered for the, to the Lord and when offered for souls. Uh, she asks for patience to keep fighting the spiritual battle. And uh, meditating on the gospel helps her to keep herself on the right track. I think we can all identify with St. Faustina so many things in her life, so many things that she had to endure. And we have some similar things that uh, crop up in our own life. So let's ask her to help us to get through all of the challenges of our lives. Thank you.